<clears throat> Hello! <laughs> Welcome to the July video! Yay! Finally! We have a lot to get through in this video and it's going to be filled with a lot of art and talks about art. But first, I wanted to take a moment to really focus on the fact that my 4th of July weekend was incredible and I got to spend it with people who I consider to be my family and who I did not get a chance to see since before the pandemic. So yeah, here we go. Sneak out of my bedroom mm -hmm. and crawl on top of my roof mm -hmm. and like just stare at the stars. I did the same oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Are you watching me make a mess of this thing? I am excited to see what happens. <laughs> the whole process. Well, the whole process. Yeah. 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 I am recording this from the future. It is October 25th right now, and even though it's been quite a while since July, which is essentially just me working on this art project that occurred the month after, in August, I think, yes, August, all the months are all confused. Even though it's been a while, I still think that it can be good to reflect back on this time in my life and what has been helpful was getting a few questions about art and this piece. Um, so I think I'll just dive into it. David asks, any significant challenges you had to overcome in the creative process? Um, so many. I feel like I was <laughs> having a breakdown almost every other day. There would be these high highs when I would accomplish something that I didn't anticipate working out and these lows where I just I would just I would just look at what I was making and think what is this hideous monstrosity who thought this was a good idea to do who let me do this why did I allow myself to dream so big and uh, I think that is always present honestly when I make things it's really just part of the process a lot of the challenges that come up are going to be functional. It's like, oh no, I, I did this paint stroke incorrectly and now I need to figure out how to make this make sense again. 
for this case there are a lot of logistical things like can the structure hold up can this go upside down how do i string lights into this without making the wiring obvious and things like that like those things will always come up and are challenging to address but for me personally the most challenging thing is always overcoming my own mental state of being you know like a lot of us i am my own biggest critic and if things do not look a certain way or are coming along a certain way it's really easy to feel defeated but i know that if i commit myself to something whether it's a date whether it's an, a concept whatever that is i will do everything in my power to make it happen even if it won't come out perfectly the way that i can overcome these challenges and these pitfalls is knowing that I make that commitment. For example, for this sculpture, I told myself, this is really important to me. I've asked people to participate in this and I can't let them down in the same way that I cannot let myself down. And so for me, when I tell myself that, it's almost as if nothing can stop me at that point. And every challenge, every bump in the road is still difficult to deal with. And of course, in my head, I'll still think, I'm so stupid, this is so stupid, why is this happening? Ah, uh, you know, like that, that comes up. But the commitment is what makes me revisit it an hour later and think, okay, how can I push forward? The commitment is what makes me wake up the next morning from a really terrible night working on this and think, okay, what next? What now? How can we continue moving? How do we get closer to the commitment that we made? Enam asked, what does being an artist mean to you and what do you want people to take away from it? And on a similar vein, Derek asked, why do you make art? I think my reason for participating in creating work has changed a lot over the years. When I started back in high school and college, it was honestly like something I depended on. It was the only thing I thought I could do well that wasn't just regurgitating information or being an observer of the world it was a way for me to make sense of everything to make sense of all of the the darkness and the shit that was just residing inside of me and creating things was the only way i knew how to process it it took me a while to feel comfortable with sharing it but as I began to share it, only in the recent years have I pushed myself to do it regularly. I've found that it's been such an incredible way to connect people. I don't love that when I create personal work, people assume that they know everything about me. There are just experiences that I want to keep close to me that are personal. And sometimes to work through them is not to put a megaphone to it out into the world, but I can put a megaphone to the things that I feel and the emotions. Though I won't tell every single story in great detail, I aim to tell a story about what it is like to be in that situation. If I can approach it from that angle, then more people will be able to see themselves in that and to feel a lot less alone. I, I think that's it. I just want people to feel a little bit less lonely in the world. And I do that by trying to break down these invincible barriers that we've created. I think we are so much more similar as entities that exist in the world, in the universe. We're so much more similar to the objects and the plants and the flowers and the birds. And I think the more you recognize that you are very much a part of this all, a part of this world, a part of this massive story, the less lonely you will feel. At least that's how I try to feel. And I'm not perfect. I don't always have that thought within me, but I know that when I am my happiest, when I make my best work, I can channel 
<laughs> that darkness that I mentioned earlier. Gosh, it's so cheesy, but it's the only way I know how to describe it. I can channel all that I've experienced, the good, the bad, and recognize it's all in flow. And isn't that fucking beautiful? I just, ugh, I love that. The experiences that people have may not be the same. My childhood, the things I experienced, will not be the same as yours or the next person's. But that's okay. I don't aim to tell my story. That isn't the point. I'm trying to share the feelings that I had from those moments and put it out there as a way to reach my hand out and to say to you, do you feel this too? Because if you do, maybe that's a sign. Hanu. Wait, Hanu's this one, yeah. right? And then the mama. And then Hello. All right, I think I'm making decent progress. Uh, I'm still definitely feeling a lot of anxiousness about getting this done and also structural integrity and also just how good it looks. I want it, uh, I think when you're so tied to your imagination, your vision of something, it can be disappointing. <laughs> Finished up the mold of the actual uh, base of the sculpture and then did a few test petals on the outer perimeter just to see how that would kind of hang. Because I made this so deep, it needs a little bit of something else to dome over so that other petals can kind of sit a bit higher in the middle. So. I'm back on the paper mache game and it'll be with the small molds instead of a giant five foot diameter beach ball. I'm certainly in that place where it's just like execute, execute, execute and hope that it works because there's no turning back now. The show is happening with or without the sculpture August 28th and it'll be sad if it doesn't work out but honestly what's going through my brain is there is no other option but to make it work. So, it will work. It will work. Karen also asked, what was it like? Was it stressful or stress relieving? It's wonderful and awful and stressful and freeing and everything. It's, it's like every possible emotion just packed in, which is probably why I like to put myself in that situation. I, I love being able to experience a wide spectrum of emotions, even though during those really hard times, uh, it, could, it could be soul crushing. There are a lot of points in making this where I was like, well, that completely didn't work. Like I would, I would spend a week working on something and then realize that it just is not going to pan out, is not going to work at all. And that would just, that'd be devastating sometimes. But that's part of it, you know? I really messed up um, when I was creating the inside of the flower. One, my initial paper mache attempts were going very awry. Two, my secondary paper mache attempts went also very awry because the balloon kept popping. So I actually ended up having to create the dome three times. And then when I finally went to install the dome, I did not do it strategically enough and I ended up burning my thumb really badly. But you won't see any clips of me actually doing the fix because I was so stressed out and in pain and feeling so, so demoralized. How do you pick yourself up? Are you gonna sit in a heap on the floor just self-pitying yourself for days? Or you do it for a solid half day before you're like, okay, <laughs> roll up those sleeves, dry those tears, and figure this the fuck out because no one, no one but you is capable of doing this exact thing at this exact time. So do it. Figure it out and do it. At least that's the pep talk I give myself. I don't know if any of that is true, but you know, we all, we all, we all need good pep talk. Edward asks, how does it feel to have an art show? What are some good and bad things in the process? Honestly, I feel so lucky to be in a position where I can honestly do it myself. It's a different kind of stress when you're managing the entirety of it and you don't have someone representing you at that moment. Um, 
but to have full creative control I think it's worth it to take on the added stress for for myself personally I feel so lucky to be able to decide to make things purely because of my finding it to be meaningful and I don't always have to answer to will this sell can this pay for my career can this pay for this gallery etc etc and I think those are very real concerns that artists have to consider because at the end of the day your livelihood is the business of art right and that business is selling <laughs> Uh, this actually goes really well into the next question by Angana, which is how do you find your artistic side? I actually work full time still. I work as a lead designer and creative director, was originally in the game industry and now I'm focused on the healthcare space. That is a lot of work and unfortunately I think that takes a lot of my time, but I feel like being able to do that and making sure that work feels purposeful and meaningful and healthy, that helps fund the time I get to spend on artwork. And sometimes they feed into each other. Sometimes my artwork helps to make my design work better. And sometimes the experiences that I have within the design world through uh, research and interviewing people and getting to know a completely different space, that will then feel my artwork too because any experience can really be inspiring if you just allow yourself to be open to it, right? So I've, I've found that it's a really healthy balance for me to have things to do and things to work on that are outside of just pure art. It's almost like in order to be inspired to make art, I need to live a life. Work gives me something structured and then I get to explore outside of that if work is flexible enough and it gives me enough financial stability to be able to make art and find time to make art. Not only that, but it also allows me to be free of the need to think of my artwork as a business. Not that that is bad, I think there are a lot of different ways people can interact with this space and thrive within it. But I've just known that if I don't feel some, some sense of security or stability, I, can't, I just can't make my best work. That's for me personally. And I've been criticized. I've been told that I'm not a true artist. I'm, I've been told that I'm not a professional because this isn't my main source of income and I'm not dedicating my life to it. But I think this like romanticization of a starving artist is, is really damaging sometimes. I think both things can hold a, a massive space in my life that is meaningful. With that said, the more people do purchase my work um, or engage with it in some way, either it's through the monthly postcard clubs or through buying paintings or prints or even just like sharing my work with their friends and loved ones, that helps me so much because I can then reinvest back into my work. I can buy more paints. I can make sure my prints are high quality. I can take some time off work if I really need to focus in on a project. So I don't want to diminish how impactful that is on my ability to create. I want you to know that if you are supporting me in some way, I'm really grateful. Hmm. Perfect. Good morning. Hi, Marilyn. You want to come in? People love you. Um, good morning. Today is Sunday, July 18th. Feeling not my best. Just like that car. <laughs> but I know that continuing to chip away at this sculpture will make me feel better. I think. Unless I run into another issue. So first thing I will figure out today is that interior molding. I'm gonna blow up a balloon. I'm gonna set up a little paper mache workshop in my kitchen. And hopefully, hopefully this will be figured out. That would cheer me up greatly. Let's watch a movie.
this is my fourth order of crepe paper. They must be so annoyed with me. They're, they're probably just like, why the fuck is this girl ordering so much clothes and rod paper? What the hell is she doing? I don't feel like doing this today. my self-worth, my anger issues about this particular part of the project has somewhat settled, somewhat recovered, and I will have this mold done before I leave for a penta for a week. Wish I could take your lips with me On the road, wherever I'd be I'd kiss you goodnight In a far-off moonlight I Wish I could take your lips with me Listen to Hello everybody, we're here making a shepherd's pie Sorry, I'm out of here <laughs> You love this part Okay, this is not for this What is it? And there are hat over there. I just need you here. I wish I could take your eyes with me, show you all the things I see. My favorite Mexican bar, open air and big bright stars. And I see a spark in the maze. I hope the rain don't come too soon You've got a hand for the take And I'm about to take it to the moon I see a spark in the making I hope the rain don't come too soon You've got a hand for the take And I'm about to take it to the moon Hello. I'm feeling very delicate today. My body and spirit. <laughs> My body feels really beat up. I'm trying very hard to not allow the physical bits to get me down emotionally, but that is that is that is quite the task right now. Just got through um I don't know like six six hours of meetings. And I am trying to mobilize to to do work. Let's see. You Rar asks, how long does it take to, for you to prepare for the show? It takes forever. <laughs> Usually, it's like a solid couple of months of being very stressed out. All in all, I think this installation piece took me about two months to actually execute on. It took me three months to plan and figure out the logistics for. And yeah, painting's about a year. Photographs, probably far beyond that. 
I think the hardest part is always conceptualizing the show and what you think it'll be like, what you want it to mean, because I feel like a show should be cohesive in what it's trying to say and put out into the world, not just a showcasing of all of your work that you happen to decide to make. It's nice to be able to understand yourself and your work well enough to edit it down to the things that are the most important to you and the things that you know can all together make the largest impact. And also sprinkle in some, some of my writings throughout the years as well. And it's, that's, that's the show. <laughs> uh. Oh my God, it works. I might cry. I can't believe it works. I might just cry. <laughs> oh my goodness. My dear friend Benjamin over in Australia asks, inspiration for the piece, why you chose to do what you did. This piece, has a lot of different elements to it and I did make a video that goes a bit more into detail um, I'll try to link it somewhere um, Kitten's cup of coffee what was your favorite part of the process it was having other people involved inviting more people in the community to participate in the installation piece by making cranes and sending them in I got this rush of motivation every time I went to my P.O. box and found a box inside filled with cranes, knowing that other people were supporting it and knowing that other people were also working on it at the same time. There's nothing better. I hope that uh, I'll find more ways to collaborate with the community moving forward because I'm realizing that that's incredibly important for me. You won't get to see the finished piece in this video because I officially completed it in August. Um, the show is also in August, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for sticking it out with me as I work through this process. Hope it was enjoyable for you. Hope this voiceover was something for you. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. And then my brother, Leno, asks, were any of your work heavily inspired by cats? If so, which one? Um, all of them are. I am very much inspired by my two cats, Merlin and Gandalf, and if it weren't for their need to eat and my need to put kibble on the table for them, I wouldn't be doing any of this. I would have no purpose to wake up in the morning. So really, every painting, every photograph, every everything I ever do is inspired by the cats. <laughs> okay.